Good afternoon all. I want to thank everybody who joins us. Today is May 11 and my name is Ola Tamanova. I'm with you today here in Ukrainian Media Center Ukraine Forum. It's been 10 years of the war and today is day 438 of the full-scale invasion of a homeland by the Russian aggressor, but still the life is going on and we continue to develop the sphere of our government services. And today we invited you to present the results of the monitoring of accessibility of this government services and I want to introduce our speakers today. It's Mstislav Banik, Head of the Electronic Services Development at the Ministry of Digital Transformation of Ukraine, Volodymyr Brusilovsky, DS Support Project Manager UNDP Ukraine, and joining us online are Tetyana Lomakina, Commissioner of the President of Ukraine for the Barrier-Free Environment, Ed Mitro Popov, a consultant on digital accessibility in the United Nations Development Program Ukraine. I hope everybody is seeing us clearly online. So, Mr. Mstislav, first question, how important is this pro problem? Why did you come up with this monitor? And we know that it's the second time you do this survey. So, what are our aspirations? What do we want? Thank you. It's good to be a person who opens this meeting today. I want to say one key thing. It's something that when we work together with United Nations Development Program on digitalization of services for, for Ukrainians, we talk, well, I will proceed from the general to more specific. So we're talking about accessibility. The full-scale war only corroborated that fact. Our digital services in the DIA application, the portal DIA, within more than a year, they became the main way to de of delivering documents to the people because it's physically impossible in the occupied territories and the people who became internally displaced, for them it's impossible to provide those services for them offline because the bandwidth is quite narrow so this is the general part and this is what I w w from where I want to proceed to the specificities about accessibility it's not about people having access but we know that there are people who need for example more profound more profound functionalities of the applications websites first of all for in terms of government services because millions of ukrainians are using them already and that analysis the testing that was going on under the guidance of united nations development program in ukraine is it's quite big because those are the big markers that we have to work on let's be honest the way it happens is you, you talk to a developer of a government website and they say everything is fine and then it turns out something is going wrong and it turns out only on the face when people start complaining and we know that people are not always ready to complain to say something like something that they cannot access something and it becomes a problem that starts snowballing so this testing is necessary to set the markers, to set the requirements, which way should we keep moving. On my end, I can say the DIA was not perfect in the beginning and that there is a lot of work to be done yet, but we set up the list of requirements to be complied with for both mobile application and the portal. And there is a lot of improvements to be done again and just one website out of a hundred is 100 percent accessible and it's a problem for the country moreover due to the full-scale invasion the military who were affected or who were injured the civilians what i mean is that the number of people who will need to access the government websites it will this number of people will only grow so talking about human centric country we're taking care of the people and people should have access to all those services and this is where we should put all our effort in 
and I'm happy that all of our team got involved in development of this accessibility and I'm happy to have this support by the United Nations Development Program with the support of the Swedish government in Ukraine. So thank you. Uh, thank you. We know that this is not the first program which is supported by UNDP in Ukraine and the results of implementation of such programs, we know we are aware of them too. So what are the results that you expect? Do you observe any progress within these two years that this monitoring is going on? Thank you. You are right. The UNDP Ukraine supports a broad range of initiatives, not only in digital area. The DIA support project, we work there with the Office of the President, with the Ministry of Digitalization and a number of other government agencies to make all the government services provided by the government, first of all, DIA, accessible to the most extent, extent possible. Uh, Mstislav already mentioned why, but again, I'll repeat it. We see that as the society is developing, the technologies of culture, technology, the digital services, they become the main source of digital services and information. And it's clear that the society, well, Ukrainian society, just like any other society, is made up of uh, different people. It's not only about the inclusiveness, but we, and the people, with disabilities but uh, for example I have an impaired sight I'm not disabled but sometimes I feel it difficult to r read some text on, in a mobile application or on a website and we all have mothers fathers grand grandparents and so on who have the same problems so this problem is getting bigger with the war and we want that program uh, progress that is achieved by Ukraine in the sphere of uh, digital transformation in development of DIA and other areas there's the result of this progress sh progress should be accessible to all the ukrainians without exclusion so that in eight or ten years all of the ukrainians receive digital services and one person just is uh, on this offline ghetto without access to the cool and comfortable convenience digital services so we're happy to have the support from the Office of the President and the Ministry of Digitalization. And our goal is to make sure that after a certain period we can take pride not only in DIA and use its services, but that we understand that every single Ukrainian can have access to those services. And it doesn't happen so that as we open the private company, within one minute or when we receive some social services so that we know that some person should stand in line without be having access to those services. This is not what we want to happen. So we think it's important. We understand that during the war, obviously, there are more priorities, other priorities, but still we don't want to lose the momentum, don't want to lose the potential, the dynamics that we have achieved already. We hope that shortly the Cabinet of Ministers of, Ukra of Ukraine will adopt the resolution which stipulates the requirements to all the government websites, applications and information systems, which which obliges all the government agencies to make those services accessible. We need to provide the indicator for the government to make sure that the government complies with its obligations and we will work with the civil sector, with the public sector, with the businesses to expand those services not and requirements not only to the government but also to the monopolies, to the big businesses. If a person cannot buy a ticket in Ukr Zaleznitsa, they don't feel better that that uh, Ukrazaliznitsa is a joint stock company and not a government company or something like that. So we have to take into account all the general global standards that are developing and our role here is to help all the actors, all the participants, everybody who's involved in this sphere to have them work more efficiently and so that we could take pride in those cool convenient services including DIA. Thank you very much. Ms. Tatiana, I'm um, Happy to have you join our conversation as a person who is dealing with barrier-free environment and somebody who implements this barrier-free environment in our reality for all the categories of our population. So how do you track as the commissioner 
of the president how do you track the accessibility of the websites and government services what do you observe in this field do we have any progress we're not hearing you oh now we are can you hear me uh, good afternoon everybody well really the war made some of the matters more urgent for us and while we're living in the situation of the full-scale invasion we've all felt how important it is to have all the digital copies of all of our documents our ids how important it is to get the quick access to the government websites to the important information to digital services and in a situation like this we have to to make sure that all the Ukrainians have such access so that from any place in Ukraine a person can get connected and get all the services they need and the rights of people who live with mental impairments, with sight impairments, hearing impairments, we have to <clears throat> make sure their rights are adhered to as well and now we're starting to change something when we face the understanding when we realize that something is not is not in accord with our expectations with their, the requirements and this monitoring that we do we see that when people who develop the websites they don't quite understand the needs of the people who live with some types of impairments and this information may become a type of tool for them an instrument to understand what exactly they need to change what the website should look like so it's convenient and useful for everybody and this is about opening new opportunities and now in ukraine there is a monitoring going on by the Minister of Information Policy and Culture. But those instruments that the UNDP is offering for monitoring, I hope they will be used. They will be used by the government authorities because those tools are more up to date and they don't only appraise what does not comply but i see they provide also specific recommendations on what has to be done to create all the necessary conditions to create the environment for accessibility and mr Vladimir already mentioned the document it that is being prepared it will be a mandatory document for all the government authorities all the government agencies to create the websites which would be convenient for use by any people with any types of disabilities and impairments so we hope it it will be happening quite soon but on the other hand we would like to draw everyone's attention to this document all the ministries this is going to be a great job we will have to process a lot of digital content and to convert our government websites in a new way but it's the, about new opportunities and for the disabled people and we have to do this well mr metro mr metro are you with us we would like to proceed to the results of our monitoring good afternoon everybody i'm happy to get involved in this process the process of implement implementation of digital accessibility in ukraine and i'm presenting the second the second summary the summary of the second survey as to the accessibility of the 100 government websites slide number two please i would like to emphasize that within the last period apart from the monitor upon the initiative of the uh, ministry of digital transformation with the support of UNDP and the government of sweden the stand the state standard 301 was established was implemented which compliance with the international standard there were also trainings for the government officials there is a web show about the web accessibility in dia and there is the official ukrainian translation on the web accessibility wcg 2.1 that's the 
main manual of the the global of the global guidelines which sets forth the requirement for the Ukrainian state standard 2 which were approved recently so slide 2 please as to the methods of the survey it was developed back in 2021 before the first monitoring And back then we wanted to evaluate the accessibility of the websites, I mean the websites of the government authorities, government agencies, to identify the discrepancies and to rectify them. Also we wanted to assist to the rectification of such mistakes and errors. This year we also wanted to see the dynamics of the results so what changed within this last year whether it became better or it became worse slide number four please the method the method the technique includes the basic accessibility indicators the first seven indicators are checked with the browser plugin is the contrast alternative text availability availability of the uh, accessible text for hyperlinks the marks for the buttons the marks for the fields program identification of the language and absence of mistakes in the page and indicators 8 to 10 they relate to the uh, keyboard navigation so they are checked manually so is the proceeding to the main content accessibility of the interface and marking by the keyboard it's very important because the people with with the impaired sight who use the screen reader and people with impaired motorics they don't use the mouse and accessibility through the keyboard is a very important requirement of accessibility so the results please slide number five according to the results of our survey only one website was able to comply with all the 10 indicators three percent of the websites they have high level of accessibility 17 percent they have sufficient level of accessibility i apologize so 17% have sufficient level accessibility, 53% average level, and 27% low level of basic accessibility. So slide number six, please. So the leaders were the websites, the leaders in accessibility, the electronic cabinet of the transporter, the website of the Kharkiv Regional Administration, and the website Dia Without Barriers, which was launched in 2022, is the part of the Dia ecosystem. And it's very good that barrier-free environment is one of the leaders of the leaders in terms of accessibility. The next slide, number seven, please. So to compare the results the websites that demonstrate the better dynamics who have the best dynamics within the last two years in terms of accessibility those who improved their indicators are this websites of the ministry of energy of ukraine the website of lviv regional administration and the site of the register of education activity entities so when we were checking the other 100 websites we identified that 13 of them just don't operate so we replaced them with the an, yet another 13 and the further results that we were comparing we were taking them only for the rest 87 websites slide number eight please the the indicators which were implemented to the lesser extent that were in that were complied with by the least number of websites first is the 
first is the quick access to the main content of the page when the readers from the keyboard when they want to start reading the content they need to click on tab key multiple times to proceed to the main content of the page because the website it has the menu and other elements of the page so when a person clicks tab for the first time they proceed right away to the main main content of the page this is the requirement of the st of the standard and only 16% of the websites they have this mechanism another component which is actually indicator number 1 the sufficient contrast it happens so that frequently it's a problem too only 28% of such websites don't have such a problem and the rest 6 72 they have insufficient contrast that may complicate the contact per content perception by the people with the sight impairment yet another element which is not always complied with is the available text for all the uh, hyperlinks the links is the element that you can click on and to switch to another page like a banner or social network pages and they have a graphic element but they do not have text element and the people who use the screen reader they cannot find out what kind of hyperlink it is and where it leads to so the developers should add the alternative text or the hidden marker so that people with impaired sight could find out what kind of hyperlink it is and unfortunately only 30% of the website reached this reached the compliance achieved the compliance with this component slide number 9 please so comparing the results we can see that the high level of accessibility I apologize high level of accessibility it's only 3% of the websites who have this high level but it's still 2% more than the year earlier the sufficient level of accessibility is 17% set and it's plus 5% comparing to the previous year the average accessibility level is 53% which is again 5% more than the year before and low level is only 27% which is 12% less than during the previous year in surveys so all the levels have sufficient uh, have positive dynamics except for the low level accessibility so the number of the websites with the low level accessibility decreased slide number 10 please also comparing the components we can see that almost in all the in all these elements all these indicators we have positive dynamics we have the bigger dynamics in component number six the automatic identification of language which is very good it's very important for the people who use the screen reader and for the people who use automatic translation in the web browser or uh, so automatic identification of the language matters for them a lot also there is positive dynamics in indicator number one eight points and we also observe the positive dynamics in all of the indicators except for indicator number seven it fell to 41 percent from 44 this is the indicator that is responsible for the errors in the code and it's the it's about the fields of accessibility and in the new websites which are being created now or which are being modernized the developers they try to use this technology there but in absence of experience they tend to commit mistakes however the main the key summary is that in all the levels in all the indicators we have positive dynamics it's very good because we it's the martial law 
the war is going on and we cannot really allocate so much resources to develop the accessibility. So upon the results of the study, please cite number, uh, slide number 11, we developed the recommendations for the owners of the websites with the low and medium level of accessibility. We recommend to initiate modernization of services and to take into account the requirements of the citizens with limited mobility. For the owners of the websites with sufficient and high level of accessibility, I, I, I apologize. So, uh, I apologize. The first recommendation was for the owners of the websites with low and medium level of basic accessibility, and for the owners of the websites with the sufficient and high level of accessibility, we recommend to take into account the components and the indicators which were not taken into account before during their next update and modernization. And for the owners of all the websites, we recommend to periodically fulfill the audit of accessibility and to timely correct identified discrepancies because the accessibility is not a permanent thing. Today you may have your site accessible and then your content manager may commit a mistake and then add, for example, an image without alternative text and this accessibility will be ruined. This is why it's important to have those audits and monitoring on a regular basis. More detail about, about the barriers that we come across can be found in our web show. It's called Web Dostupnis, Web Accessibility. It's posted on on the portal and I appreciate your attention and I will answer all the questions that you may have. Mr. Natro, thank you, thank you for your presentation. We will probably have first questions to Mr. Mstislav. We've seen that there is certain dynamics but talking about the results there is still a lot of work to be done. We're still at a quite low level of accessibility in terms of our online resources of our government services. So the question will be to you as to the persons who deal with those processes in the state. Do you have any levers to expedite these processes? Do you have any KPIs that you want to achieve within the next year, for example, to comply with some indicators next year to improve the accessibility, say, next year? Uh, specifically what you said, Mstislav, that it's quite important during the war for us. Well, I will start from the end probably. So inside we're already working on it. We're working in the portal and in mobile application. So the, the main lever is the legislation which is about to be adopted. So this is the story which is it's mandatory to be complied with and the government authorities will have to bring it in compliance. I mean, the, their websites to bring them in compliance with the requirements developed. Ms. Titana, please. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. What I would like to say is that really we need to to sort out this document finally to have it adopted, this resolution, and it will oblige the government websites, but there is still a lot of work to be done to create, to create accessibility for any company, for any organization that works in Ukraine and provides services, I, I mean pharmaceutical companies, the companies which provide banking services, all types of services, they need to be accessible and we will need to work on the relevant legislation, so there is still a lot of work to be done. Thank you very much, dear. Uh, uh, just in brief, just a couple of words, I completely agree with my colleagues, UNDP is ready to support the further development in this sector, including the development of the draft law. One thing to add is only we know that in Ukraine, the rules that are approved as le legislation, they are uh, sometimes they just do not work because 
they are not complied with. So I, I hope this uh, law will be adopted soon. We have to keep working on that. But in our opinion, besides le legislation, we have to continue working on training government officials on we have to continue the monitoring, we have to continue working with the public sector, with the businesses, so that everybody understands the necessity of accessibility, the importance of accessibility. I think it's clear enough, but still not to have all the formal requirement, but to have this mission, to have the government services available. I mean, this there should be understanding by the top level government officials because we see this initiative on part of uh, say ministry of digital transformation we see the understanding in uh, by on part of tatiana but the, there should be understanding in the wide crowds of the decision makers this is the key thing so that we can take pride in our high quality digital services in after a certain period to make sure that all those things are accessible to all the Ukrainians. Thank you, dear colleagues. If you have any questions, please join our conversation. Any comments? Any questions? We've been talking today about the people with sight impairments. So is it the same story with the people with the hearing impairment or the dynamics differ to a certain extent? Well, it's quite simple here. Fortunately, in the world the, there were a lot of people working on this matter. And so talking about the standard of accessibility, it's a standard that survived a lot of evolutions. This standard is approved on the level of the European Union countries and it, it takes into account the sight and hearing and motorics impairment cognitive impairments it takes into account everything this standard keeps evolving it keeps developing and fortunately we don't have to invent our bicycle it's enough just to do or it's sufficient to do what the european countries do they adopt it on the level of the european Parliament resolution they approved this standard so apart apart from this accessibility matter it's also harmonization with European legislation so we just have to take it and to start start its operation in Ukraine because when we start inventing our initiatives it turns out to be not quite productive sometimes in Ukraine so now that the global global society global community is working on the standards in the area of digital accessibility we are sh convinced that this move will allow the people with some impairments or without impairments ju just with uh, just worse side that they have all the access to all the digital services being developed in ukraine so to summarize it, I will probably ask Mr. Mstislav, we understand when the legislation is being developed, it may not include all the requirements, all the components to make sure it operates smoothly and that the final rece recipient of the services receives them in a qu high quality manner. So as a ministry, are you going to get involved in development of any auxiliary materials which will help our government authorities to implement those changes really but not formally well in a view of the experience of the last years when most part of the government agencies as they develop their websites they come to us for advice i think they will continue doing it with the accessibility too but just like volodymyr mentioned it and like metro presented it there is no it's not like a field for creativity but there is a comprehensive list of requirements that have to comply with and obviously the representatives of the government agencies they obviously may get lost on this path to lose the their guiding light but there is in fact a roadmap or a checklist how do i call it right there there is just a checklist that you have to comply with and it will work Thank you very much for this meeting, for this conversation. I hope that we will be advancing in this matter shortly. We're
already taken pride in the way our government services our online services are operating and i hope they will be accessible to everybody i appreciate everyone's interest in this topic i want to thank our speakers and our next briefing is at 1300 and we will be talking about a topic of not lesser importance we will be talking with the training programs for the government officials for reintegration of crimea so stay tuned work together for our victory and glory to ukraine